All right, David Kahn here with another question from the question bank in topic 11.2. We're looking at transformers. Uh, the diagram below shows an ideal transformer, so we're going to ignore any energy losses within the transformer. We have a primary side with a certain number of coils and a secondary side with more coils. We're told that the core is laminated. Use Faraday's law to explain why, for normal operation of the transformer, the current in the primary coil must vary continuously. Why well, you can't just put a DC current in there. You have to have an AC current. Uh, the reason is that for an EMF to be generated in the secondary coil, Faraday's law tells us that we need a time-changing flux through the coil. This comes from a time-changing magnetic field, which in turn comes from a time-changing current in the primary coil. All right, what's next? Outline why the core is laminated. Uh, well, to answer this, we need to understand what it means for the core to be laminated. Uh, it means that the core is not a solid block of iron. Instead, it's made of many, many square layers. So this whole layer is one solid piece. But what's not shown in the diagram is sort of the, the three-dimensional Im image of it, where it has a thickness. And each layer, it's hard to draw them small enough, is made up of many, many layers. And so why would it be made up of layers and not just a solid block? You would think it would be easier to manufacture a solid block, and it may very well be. Um, but the reason that you don't do that is to help direct the magnetic field around, help direct the magnetic field around the loop. So back and forth and back and forth around the loop. Uh, we don't want the magnetic field looping within, so through the page. Uh, we call those eddy currents, and if it loops through the page, it doesn't reach the secondary coil, and, and any of that change is lost. So why is the core laminated? Uh, to help direct the, magne the uh, induced magnetic field. Eh, maybe not induced. Help direct the generated magnetic field around the transformer. and avoid eddy currents. Uh, finally, we want to do a little calculation. The primary coil of the ideal transformer is connected to an alternating power supply rated at 230 volts. So the input side is 230. Uh, the transformer is designed to provide power for a, a lamp rated at 12 volts and 42 watts. So the output side is 12 volts, and we want to get from those volts 42 watts of power. Uh, there are 450 turns of wire on the secondary coil, so this side has 450. Determine the number of turns of wire on the primary coil and the current from the supply for the lamp to operate at normal brightness. It's very unusual that they ask for two quantities in one question. Normally, they would break that up. Uh, but there you have it. That's what they've done. Uh, so we're looking for the relationship between what we know and maybe first the uh, number of coils on the primary side. Uh, well, the number of coils is proportional to the flux linkage. And the more flux linkage you have, the more the flux linkage can change, and the bigger the EMF you can get. Uh, so what we can say is that the ratio of the number of coils on the primary side to the number of coils on the secondary side has to be the same as the ratio of the voltage on the primary side to the voltage on the secondary side. Solving for the number of uh, coils on the primary side, we get 450 coils on the secondary side times that same ratio, uh, 230 to uh, 12. 
our calculator tells us that that is 8,600 to two significant figures turns. Uh, just doing a quick double check, we see that we start with a ton of coils on one side, fewer coils on the other, which drops the voltage. Checks out. Uh, so now we want the current on the supply side. Well, we know the voltage on the supply side, but we don't know the resistance, and we don't know the power on the supply side. We do know the power on the uh, secondary side, though. Um, and since this is an ideal transformer, we can make the assumption that any power we get out of the secondary side had to go in to the primary side. So we can say that power equals current times voltage. Knowing the voltage and the power, we can get the current. So we'll say P equals IV, I equals P on V, uh, 42 watts of power divided by 230 uh, volts gives us 0 0.18 amps into the uh, primary socket. 